G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop. This is part C of part three of the Plate Rack Project. In part B, I shared with you how I cut mortises. In part A, I shared with you how I sharpen chisels. So now with sharp chisels and mortises, it's time to cut some tenons. So that's it with the mortises. Now, I'll share with you how I cut tenons. Now again, if you Google it or look in books or I'm sure you ask around, there are many different ways of doing it. This is the way I'm going to use on this particular bit of timber and the method I use generally is dictated to me by the timber I'm using. This is really beautiful and it just melts under a chisel. So most of mine's gonna be chisel work. If it was hardwood, like a, a eucalypt, I'd most likely use a saw. But in this case, I'm gonna generally pare most of this away. There will be a couple of saw cuts, but the rest of it's gonna be chisel work and a bit of plain work. As you can see, with a marking gauge, I've marked these ends. So there's a line there and a line there, and I've continued them around here. And I've also marked the thickness of the tenon. Now in this particular job, what I want to do, as I've said before, is have a through tenon on this. So the length of the tenon, I want to be a little bit more than the width of this side of the plate rack. And then I can plane it off later on. So they're all being marked and set up. Again, make sure your chisel's sharp and we can start and with your eye just make sure that that line is continuous and that actually meets on the corner where you're changing the surface that way you know it's square as before if you don't have a tail vise use a um, an f clamp or a g clamp or whatever suits your purpose of that gauge line i'm just going to run the chisel up there to give me a reference face for my saw to sit in. With this particular cut, I'm gonna use a Japanese saw because for me, a lot of people don't like it. This is Queensland walnut. It's very high in silica, but to me, it's just a beautiful timber to work with, providing it's dry, because it stinks if it's not dry. So a Japanese saw is fine, but if I was using a eucalypt and one of the hard ones like spotted gum, turpentine, iron bark or something like that, I would then use a back saw or a tenon saw. But if you, that's all you've got, that'll work absolutely fine. Just make sure it's sharp. Okay, what I'm gonna do is cut down to this line here, which is gonna be the top face of the tenon. <coughs> I don't want to cut into the tenon itself, so just take it very easily. I have actually gone into it a little bit, but in this situation, it doesn't matter, and you'll see why in a moment. Now I'll turn it over, exactly the same thing. Get a chisel, score right up that knife line. See how crisply that just breaks away? Lovely stuff. Okay, that's just a bit, isn't it? So now I've cut down there to the bottom of the shoulders. So this is gonna be the face of my tenon here. Now what I'm gonna do with a sharp chisel is just continue to pare that waist away. Look how beautifully that's just running off the chisel. Now sure, if I was in a hurry and I was under the pump to get this done. I possibly could use a bandsaw or you could do these on the table saw, but 
this isn't a rush job, it's a love job, and it's a wonderful opportunity to get in touch with your work, use hand tools and get the coordination. So then you develop a feel, and as you're working more and more on your own projects, that feel becomes a part of you and the tool just becomes an extension of your hand. And the only way you can get that is through practice. So a lot of things in woodwork, it's not about getting it done quickly, it's about developing the skill to do it all in one motion, if you like. The tool, the hand, your mind, your eye, the job, they all become one. And that's pretty close to the line. I'm not gonna go down right onto the line. There's a little bit of fat there, so I can do some trimming when I've actually done the mortise. And there you have it, a finished tenon. And I've just got enough meat on there to play around with to fit it into the mortise. But what I'm doing is different to a normal tenon. I want to have what they call a twin tenon. So that means there's going to be a bit of meat taken off here and a bit of meat taken out of the center. So in effect, it's like a square dovetail when you look at the process we employ to do it. Uh, it has no added value. In larger constructions, yes, it can be used indoors, uh, especially if you've got um, a huge mortise you've got to cut and it's gonna weaken the door itself. You can have these as twin tenons, which gives you the strength of a large tenon, but it also strengthens the mortise. But in this case, all I'm doing it for is decorative purposes because I'm going to have wedges in it and instead of one big tenon coming through like that, I think aesthetically it's going to look nicer if I can have two tenons poking through and then I'll pop wedges in there. So that's the only reason. And the reason I'm showing you this is you might like to try it as well. If not, you can get away with just doing a through tenon or you can just put a screw in it. It's going to work just as well. Okay, so let me get a marking gauge. Oh, come here. Hello. Hello, Bob. You just Bob say hello. You staying? What are you doing? What? I don't know, something's happening. Now he's having a drink. Have a look at what he's drinking out of. Bob. Now, I don't bet you. I wouldn't drink that. Yuck. All right, so I've marked out the cut lines. So I'm going to come in off the shoulder here. That's going to be waste. That's going to be waste. And that's going to be waste. Several ways I could do it. I could put it in the vise. Grab a coping saw. Cut down. Cut across. Get rid of the waste. Then clean it up with a chisel. Same on the side. I can just cut down there with a Japanese saw or a back saw. And then cut down here. But... I know, sometimes sawing, I'm not the best at sawing, but I know I've got more control over a chisel. So I'll show you a way that I use to do this. And again, it, it really is dependent on the timber. If I was using, say, uh, black cherry or walnut, uh, maple, um, poplar, any of those types of timbers, this would work fine. But when you start getting into the really hard hardwoods, uh, I think I'd resort back to a saw. That goes under there to give me support when I'm chiseling. Put a block in there to hold it steady. And we've got this shoulder line already here. So there's no danger of me moving that line backwards, providing I'm careful. And what I do is take a chop, the back of the chisel right up against that shoulder line, just to little chop like that and then come in remove that waste again come in bit of a chop flick it out this timber is so nice I don't even really need a mallet make sure that the gap you've got between your two tenons is a chisel that you have that way there's not much messing about. So that's how that looks at the moment. 
I'll just turn this over. Bob's got the wanders. Where are you off to, mate? Same thing, back of the chisel, up on the shoulder of the tenons, chop down, clean out the waste. And that is through. Now what I'm going to do is exactly the same on these side bits. This is a little bit different because I don't have an already defined shoulder. So I just come in a little bit off that knife mark. A bit of a tap. Then down to the knife mark. Pretty close. Okay. Now drop it in a normal vise. Grab your saw and just saw on the outside of the gauge lines you drew earlier. Down to that shoulder. You can if you want. Finish that off with a saw. And there you have two very nice tenons. And in here, it's already nice and clean. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes when I saw, I make a bit of a dog's breakfast out of it. Whereas I find doing it this way, at least I've cleaned the shoulder up, where it's going to be seen, and it's nice and clean. And if I do mess it up in here a little bit, I can clean that out with a chisel later on. But that's just my way of doing it. There's a lot of ways of doing it. Experiment, push the envelope, find what works for you. Okay, so that's the joints that I'm going to be using to put this plate rack together. So I'll go about, cut these up. I will do part of the filming of the process so you can actually see it going together and make sure it's not done with smoke and mirrors, which I assure you it's not. And next episode, we won't actually put it together, but I'll talk about wedge joints because I'm going to actually have these wedge tenons and there's three ways that I know of I can use wedge tenons. We didn't do a blind mortise. That's because I haven't totally worked out how I'm going to fit that in, but it involves doing a little bit of carving or decoration to part of the plate rack as well. So until we meet again, this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Enjoy your woodwork. If you like what we do, like us on Facebook, and by all means, we would love your support. We now have a Patreon account. If you'd like to check us out there, you can go to the website, woodworkingmasterclass.com.au, and there's a link to our Patreon page. Bob's excited about it. What did you have got to say for yourself, Bob? Yeah, loosely translated, that means he wants something else to chew. So until we see you again and we meet in the shed, look after each other. Bye for now. Before I do that, good on me, I've messed it up again. Oh, it was like...